Hello my soccer universe. Match day one at the Copa America is in the books and I thought I'll share some thoughts with you on this competition. So far I did not see any of the games live, you know, time difference. However, I could watch highlights of all the games and you know you follow some news left and right there. The first thing that I want to note is that I find that the goal scoring is really low which is probably also kind of reflected of the level of play true heat might play into that but we so far had only three games that had more than three goals actually those were two two ones and one three one the rest was all two goals unless we already had two goalless draws with peru against chile being especially dire however on the positive side we have for instance venezuela getting a pretty big win over ecuador two one and yes they had a man more but they had to also come back from a one goal deficit against a team that generally would be considered higher level than venezuela but venezuela looking actually quite strong in their group we also had a relatively positive performance by canada who gave Argentina some scare and of course I wouldn't be remiss to mention Costa Rica who managed to hold Brazil to a nil-nil. That is also the negative performance of the tournament so far. I mean Brazil against Costa Rica nil-nil that's pretty shameful one gotta say. Uh, another fortunately relatively negative thing is of course the state of the pitches especially the one in Atlanta <laughs> uh, was mentioned by the Argentinian guys who of course used too much better stuff and they were them being world champions that is definitely something that had to be mentioned and I think this will be an issue for the upcoming World Cup as well before we look now how the results have impacted the current projections and who is now the favorite to win after the first round of matches I'm gonna give you short summaries actually pull the short videos that are made for the Copa America and put them into one collage and then we'll see each other on the other side and we'll look at the current projections so Argentina to start their Copa America title defense with a 2-0 win over Canada in Atlanta, Georgia. A win that was overall all right. I would say uh, Canada now under Jesse Marsh can be a side that can cause you a little bit of problems. But in the end, it was more that Argentina missed chances uh, to make it an even higher scoreline than Canada being so threatening of creating uh, chances. I would say that Canada had one big one through Jonathan David. And other than that, it was them trying to move on, but they got caught out on so many counterattacks. So yeah, the go-ahead goal for Argentina came just right after the half, after I think Di Maria missed one where he had actually should have played it to Messi. Uh, it was a Messi pass to McAllister and then Julian Alvarez taps it in while McAllister lies on the floor, seemingly injured. Messi had two one-on-ones with the opposing goalkeeper, didn't work out uh, in either case. And then late on he assisted Lautaro Martinez, make it 2-0. So rather easy and I think it reflected well the game at the Copa America in the first kind of big clash in Group A. Peru and Chile end up with a nil-nil draw. Kind of the logical result if you think about it because a win for either of these teams would have put the other one already in pretty big danger given that Canada is considered the fourth best team in Argentina, the first team in this group. Maybe the schedule will not favor Peru a little bit more because they have to play Canada first and Chile will have um, to play Argentina. So we'll see about that. Uh, for the game itself, there were a few big chances. The biggest one probably for Alexis Sanchez early on already. La Patula had one in the second half. Peru was not really present in the first half. But in the second half, they were a little bit more in the game. But in the end, it's a nil-nil draw. So on the first match day of Group B at this year's Copa America, we saw a deserved 1-0 win for Mexico over Jamaica. The goal came relatively late in the 69th minute through Gerardo Arteaga. However, deserved it was to have plenty of chances for the Mexicans. More crucially though, Captain Edson Alvarez seemingly pulled his hammer and had to come off under tears in the 30th minute. Not sure if his tournament will continue. A little bit less straightforward though was the affair between Ecuador and Venezuela. Ecuador of course the favorites, however they suffered a blow early on when Ana Valencia after a pretty brutal kick in the chest uh, was sent off in the 22nd minute. Still Sarmiento gave Ecuador a 1-0 halftime lead so it didn't show immediately. However in the second half Venezuela then turned on around uh, with Cardiff getting equal in the 64th and Bayo then the winner in the 74th minute. And with that, of course, Venezuela are the first leaders in Group B. So the United States got their home campaign at this year's Copa America off to a good start. Pulisic already scoring the third minute to give the United States a 1-0 lead. They create plenty of chances following Balogun just before the break. Makes it 2-0. It should have been probably 3 or 4. 
against a very hapless Bolivia side, but nevertheless, you're off to a good start. However, Marcelo Bielsa's Uruguay off to a slightly better start because they beat Panama 3-1. Created also plenty of chances in there, scoring through Maxi Araujo in the first half. Darwin Nunes, of course, missing chance as well, but he gets in the 84th minute the decisive goal. Then Vinia adds one stoppage time and I thought it's a classic scoreline, 3-0. Murillo pulls a really nice one into the net for Panama, also deep in stoppage time, so very many late goals if you would like, and so the scoreline was a little bit more palatable, but Uruguay are the first leaders in Group C. Colombia had a successful start to their Copa America campaign, beating Paraguay in a really tight match 2-1. It was a 2-0 halftime lead, both assisted by uh, James Rodriguez. The first one was by Munoz in the 32nd minute and 10 minutes later Lerma makes it 2-0. However, Paraguay was really well into game and they get a goal back by Enthiso. So it's only a 2-1 and I'm look out for this Paraguay team. They might get some points off Brazil potentially because also Costa Rica got a point of Brazil but it was just a purely defensive performance. Brazil majorly misfiring having plenty of chances to actually take a lead. They actually took the lead through Marquinhos however it was an offside uh, in the build up there and also the Paqueta hitting the uh, crossbar as well. So you know with a little bit of luck Brazil could have gotten a win but it's majorly disappointing and very late Peter Bruno Guimaraes had a really glorious chance and missed that one as well. If it wasn't for yesterday, not much would have changed. The only thing that was a real change is that Venezuela was now, of course, ahead of Ecuador, which kind of was expected because it was the biggest upset up until that point. Now Colombia is favored to win Group D, Brazil only a second ahead of Costa Rica and Paraguay suddenly second, And although this Paraguay team kept it actually quite level against Colombia. So I think Group D might be way more open than we would expect. However, if it really remains like that, the bracket would pan out as follows. And again, remember, one finalist comes from us, groups A and B, the other one out of C and D. So we had now Argentina would play Venezuela, not a big change there, Mexico against Chile. Oh, there's some bad memories for the Mexicans, I would say. Still, Mexico would be favored over Chile. Yeah, Chile is probably an old team, as we have seen. Same thing would be true if Peru would move on. Then Uruguay against Brazil, what a classic that would be. And then Colombia against the United States. That was a recent friendly that didn't go so well for the United States either. And so we would have Brazil against Colombia because Brazil would still be favored over Uruguay, although it's getting quite tight. And we, of course, would have Argentina against Mexico. And then we have the final that everyone is looking forward to in Miami. But the big change, of course, is that Colombia is now into the top four. That's also reflected in the overall favorites. Argentina now ahead of Uruguay and Colombia. Brazil only in fourth place because Brazil will have to play Uruguay. They will have a slightly tougher route going to the final. That definitely impacted the standings as well. At the moment, you see it's relatively level where Brazil end up in the group. Other than that, no big changes have occurred. So, yeah, a thought, quick update on the Copa America. Hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel, hit the little bell icon, so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!